Hello, I'm Robert Cooper, and we're at the Desert Classic Dance Sport Championships in beautiful Palm Desert, California. And I've got with me tonight Alan Dixon. He's a judge, and he's originally from England. Just want to ask you a couple of questions about your perspective on judging various competitions. When you're out there doing an open professional event, what are you looking for? Okay, uh, it just depends a little bit from Latin to, to standard or which style, but generally maybe posture, um, the kind of movement or energy across the floor, and maybe the musicality, timing, partnering skills, of course. Yeah, you know, I hear so many times that people, if spectators, you know, maybe new to the sport, are sitting there and they ask, how do the judges choose? How do they know? I mean, to them, everybody looks fantastic and everybody is fantastic. But there are those that have a certain edge that get them to the higher ranks. What do you think that is? Is it more practice? Is it better technique? Um, I, I think it's smart practice. Actually, I think everybody practices very hard uh, and put a lot of time and a lot of effort in. But um, the way that you practice and, and structure your practice uh, maybe to share the time from different dances and different aspects. Smart practice, it's a very, very interesting aspect. I like that. Um, because I think that there, as a teacher myself, I know that sometimes my students come in and maybe they're having a bad day or maybe they're just not mentally there and their, their practice is not, or their lesson is just not as productive as some other Absolutely, times. Yeah. So I think as a professional out there competing, you really have to be on the top of your game. And by being on top of your game is being wise. Yes. The time you have, especially if you're traveling from comp to comp and to different parts of the world, you know, with jet lag and that type of thing, you need to make your time very smart, you know, when you're practicing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the Pro-Am events. Um, you know, we've got the various levels of the syllabus and we go anywhere from newcomer up to open gold. And then of course you've got the solo events. What do you look for in a newcomer event? Obviously these people are brand new, not dancing very long, and butterflies are going and they're nervous. And How do you justify in your head where the nervousness stops and where the technique comes in or the musicality comes in? I mean, where, where, how do you do that? Um, that's a great question. I, I think that obviously if they're new, we're not expecting uh, perfection uh, by any means. So if they're accurate with their steps and, and they're trying their best to enjoy themselves at the same time and, and dance with their teacher, dance with their partner, um, they won't have the same togetherness, but the, the quality shows if they if they right. if they are trying to match right. their teaching. You know, I have danced with a number of newcomers in my career, and you know they're out there, they're shaking and everything. You're like, stand up, stand up, smile, smile. And it's a lot to think about at that level. Absolutely. But as they continue to progress into the various levels of this syllabi, or from syllabus to syllabus, level to level, you start to see the maturity of the dancer starting to come out, and they Absolutely. start to calm down and that type of thing. So obviously, when you get to a silver or a gold level, it's going to change your perspective. Is going to change, you're going to expect a little bit more from Absolutely, them. Absolutely, yes. Talk a little bit about maybe the gold levels. Well, now I, I'm expecting to see the, the student almost become a partner um, and, and really do their share of the, the dancing as well and become aware that, um, you know, the teacher can only help you so much. From that point on, the students right. have to do it right. as well. So. Oh, hold on a second. I love what you just said. You know, the teacher can only help you so much, but then it's the responsibility of the student. And I think that goes back to a lot of things where they have to think more cognitively about it, listen more, listen audibly and physically to their, yes. to their teacher or to their partner. I really like that. Talk to me about when you get into a final, let's say a rising star final. Okay, and you've got a lot of good people out there. What's going to make the first place different from the second place? Is it interpretation? Is it? I think it, it, it's if they practice well and, and they understand the, the technical aspects, they have a little bit more time uh, to dance to the music, maybe rather than getting through their choreography. They have just a little bit more polished to the, the performance. Right. Uh, I think that's a very good point too. Um, 
not just dancing their choreography, but actually taking time, having time to maybe milk a hip or, or rob from one count and give a little bit more in a hesitation that gives them just a little bit more poise on the floor Absolutely. or perhaps just a little bit of something different. And it's standard, they maybe finish their rise more, more perfectly and, right. and or finish their lines. I like what you're saying, finishing lines, finishing the rise. I think a lot of times we tend to just dance and we're not really dancing with the technique. We're just kind of going through the routine that we know or you know, whatever, but really putting it all together. I think that's probably the key. And you keep coming back to a specific topic about partnershiping. Mm -hmm. The connection between the two is very, very important. Well, to me, that's that's the essence of ballroom dancing. If, if we're doing ballroom, it's man and woman, and, and it's how they work together, how they communicate, of course, not audibly, but through their, their, their weight and through right. their lead and their actions. So. Well, then the dance of, I mean, the language of dance is physical rather than and a exactly. verbal hearing, verbal hearing. So when you get into the Latin um, events when the partners are separating or, or perhaps the smooth events where the partners are separating that connection still has to come across well, for sure there's, there's eye contact there's, there's, there's uh, visual leads and shaping right to to, in, uh, to let the la lady know where you you want them to go and, right. and so on let's talk about you um, personally for just a second when did you start dancing how did you get involved in dance sport well i started dancing when i was 8 um, a good question, just a, a family friend and, and I got dragged down to dance as the boy. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, but I, I loved it and, and I, you know, I've kept it as my career, it's been a great career for me. Yeah, you've had a pretty illustrious career yourself, that's very nice. Um, so if you have one thing that you could tell the ballroom dance community about preparing for a competition. What is the best way to prepare for a competition? I guess it's to keep calm and just know that either your your teacher or your, or your own practice, you're well prepared. If you're well prepared, you're, you're confident. Right, probably absolutely. You know, I know if we go to competition, we're not quite ready. Uh, oh, absolutely. I've been there before. Know, that's when it shows on the floor. So if you're well prepared, and you put the homework in, uh, and you you know discussed your problems with your partner, with your teachers, and um, and, and really done your work, then you, you can go over there and just enjoy and be confident. Let's ask you one more question, then I'll let you go. I know you're busy this weekend. Over 6,000 entries at this competition. It's very very large. A great comp. Yeah, it's a fantastic comp. You know, I keep coming back to this topic of it being a vacation or a destination competition. I mean, this beautiful hotel, wonderful people, and a lot of entries. So I know you've got your work cut out as a judge for you. But let me talk about flash versus syllabus, or flash versus the step. Well, quite honestly, as a judge, actually, once I started judging, I, I realized uh, a very dis different aspect. Uh, basically, we've got a few seconds to make a decision. So it's not really what you do, but the way you do it is much more important. So quality always beat flash. There you have it, folks. Quality over flash. So just another perspective from a very well-known judge in the ballroom dance community, Alan Dixon. We appreciate you coming. Thank, Thank you, you very, much. very much. Once again, I'm Robert Cooper from the Desert Classic Competition in the Desert. Thank you very much.